Hey, I have some good news. It seems like a lot of times when I get in front of the camera, that's not what's happening. So first, the old news. My website, accursedfarms.com, has been updated. That actually happened last year, but didn't get completely finished until later. A big thanks to the main web coder who made that happen, and with other stuff you're going to see. It's pretty much the same thing as it was. It still has the forums, frequent questions, and should be easier to browse the videos now that you can sort them by series if you want. I never know what YouTube is going to do, so this should serve as a stable refuge to find my videos if they screw things up for me in the future. And hey, there's a corner now that says when play sessions and live video chats with fans will be, so that should maybe help communication. The site also looks much better on mobile devices, or so I'm told. It still doesn't look any different to me on my phone, but other people say it's better. I just wanted something simple where you could get to information in the videos. I still don't understand this Web 2.0 stuff. I did an image search for Web 2.0 and this came up. Looks pretty culty to me. This one is called Web 2.0 Defined. What? Well, I like the colors. So that's the first announcement, but that's not the big one. The big one is about games. I've been asked before, what's my outlook on the future of gaming? Should we be hopeful, full of despair? I think both. I think it's the best of times, it's the worst of times. Well, I recently did a video on the worst of times. I mean, companies are literally destroying games so they can never be played by anyone ever again. Even if you paid for them. I don't see how it gets any worse for gaming than that. See, I'm doing it again. That's not what this is. This is the best of times. I'm unleashing a project I started years ago as just something for myself, but it's grown into the behemoth you're about to witness. A while back, I did a video on my own top 25 most anticipated games, just as an experiment. Since then, I've considered doing something like that again, but I just can't keep up, not even close. So instead, I'm releasing an easy to browse version of my own personal games list. This is an archive of every game I'm interested in that's past my own filter. This is not the same as a curator's list because that implies the curators actually played the game. I haven't played most of these. I don't even own most of them. In the movie Starship Troopers, newscasts frequently end with saying, would you like to know more? In case you wanted more information about the war on bugs. I do. Will every game on this list I would like to know more about. And I am picky. Most games that come out now, I'm not that interested in. But these are ones that even with my filter, I still want to play them. Or at least I think I do. The other criteria for this list is these are games that probably don't have tens of millions of dollars in marketing behind them. If it's a game I've heard about 30 times without even trying to, then it is not on the list. I wrote down these titles because I thought I might forget them. Now sometimes these games went on to become much more popular, but I had no way of knowing that at the time. So these are all games that have not been drilled into my head from advertising and exposure. Hmm, a Need for Speed game. I wonder if I've seen that name before. Should I write down that title? Need for Speed? See, that's how this list came about. I might see an article on a game for one day and then never hear about it again. Well, I usually didn't have time to research it then and there, but I could at least write down the title to check later. Well, later has arrived. And a huge thanks to the volunteers who helped grab screenshots and links for these. So here it is. Here is the list. I better give you a preview, since the first thing I'm expecting to happen after making a video like this is for the website to crash. The host says it won't. I guess we'll find out. If that does happen, just wait a little while. It'll come back. I made sure this was easy to browse and full of screenshot previews. I was inspired by a blog I saw in the past, Reasons Why It's Worth to Be a PC Gamer, where the author arranged a bunch of games by screenshot and a simple description of the game. This is by far the easiest way I've seen for me to browse games. I like screenshots over covers and titles a lot more. Covers don't tell you that much. In the old days, this was the cover and this was the game. 
there can be a disconnect. So it's all screenshots for this. Oh yeah, I guess that was a tip off. These are all PC games, though I'm sure some are multi-platform. I didn't check for that. I'm not against console games. It's just, it's complicated. A lot of people can be negative about games nowadays and I get where they're coming from, but you also have to consider what you're being shown. If I only got game exposure from major sources, focusing on games with the biggest budgets and marketing, then yeah, I'd probably be negative too. Bitter even. But that is not what this is. I would bet 90% or more of the games on my list are not casual games, not asset flips, have no microtransactions, do have a single player mode, are not games as a service, though there are some, there are some, and just appear to be real game experiences. If you're someone who's distressed about the state of gaming today and think everything's just a cynical money grab, well, my list might change your mind. And this list is big. I think some of the gaming public doesn't realize just how many promising games come out each year. Even with me trying to filter them out, it still came to hundreds. In fact, as I say this, I don't even know how many. Let's ask Future Ross. It's over 750. Se you sure? Yeah. Why would I lie about that? Well, you heard him. And again, these are not shovelware. These are games that look so good, I wanna stop what I'm doing and go play them. It almost doesn't even seem possible there are that many, but you'll see for yourself. If you've ever felt like you've run out of good games to play, check the list because I sure don't have that problem. And in case you're wondering, there's no money involved with this, but aside from YouTube ads. I don't get money if people come to the website and nobody's paying me money to link to stores. Now last year, GOG, GOG, was paying me for links of that nature, but it was a small amount and they ended up canceling the contract. So now they don't. A lot of these game links go to GOG. So I guess they're getting a bunch of promotion for free from me now. Oh well. I tend to give GOG preferred status since they're the only online seller that can guarantee you get to keep your game when you buy it. Hell, even physical copies don't guarantee that anymore. The point is, I can be bribed to do exactly what I was going to do anyway, but since I was going to do it anyway, there's currently no bribe. I probably could get offers from shadier game sites, but I keep hearing bad things about them. So maybe I shouldn't burn down any goodwill I have in the gaming community for what, 10 bucks a month? I don't know what they pay. I mostly just use these sites if I buy something from EA. It is worth stating that no one can buy their way onto the list. If I think the game looks promising for me, then sure, it's on the list. That's the only metric. I actually have gotten offers before to promote mobile games, but I don't think they'll run very well on my phone. My current plan is to be on mobile, both uh, Android and iOS. Uh, we don't have any plans at the moment to do a uh, PC. Do you guys not have phones? Yeah, you guys that, all have phones. Phone. Right. You can play your tablet too. Okay, let's talk about the categories a minute because while this may seem obvious, some are not obvious. First off, you can browse by year. Some people don't want old games. That's fine. Some people do want old games. In fact, in my forums, user I'm CIA says there hasn't been a good video game since 2004. Gaming deserves to die. I didn't ask how he came to that conclusion, but good news CIA, if you don't believe the newer games on my list are any good, you can set it to filter out anything past 2004. Done. And that brings up a point. If anything, this list is a little light because these are mostly newer games. I haven't gotten around to adding the bulk of Abandonware games I'm interested in yet. So don't worry, CIA, there's more stuff from before 2004 coming. And for the new games crowd, I'm also adding early access and games that aren't out yet. However, I'm going against the industry here in that I'm biased in favor of games that have been completed. 
So all early access and unreleased titles go to the back of the line. Yeah, there you go, back behind the 80s games. We have plenty of space just for you. You can come to the front of the line once you're actually finished. Oh yeah, I also have page numbers because I'm not a fan of that infinite scrolling trend going on now. Next, let's talk about the game genres. I'll tell you right now, some of these are gonna be wrong, I don't care. I'm looking at this the way somebody running a video rental store might, even though those are mostly extinct now. I just wanna keep it simple. I'm not gonna give a game double or triple exposure on the list just because it's more than one genre. So I have to pick just one. That means this is gonna be a mess no matter what. Here's some info screens so you can figure it out and explain some of the oddities. I'm also listing examples of famous games not on the list to help orient you. Oh, and one thing I do wanna point out is in the past, I've had some people complain about old graphics or pixel art. Well, if I had to guess, I bet those are the action people. So good news. I've filtered out all 2D games from the action category. Now I can't save you if somebody makes a modern, intentionally retro looking 3D game, but hey, that's why you have the screenshots. And on that note, I have a 2D action category, but this excludes platformers since I didn't wanna to have to figure out how much action qualifies as action. So naturally here are the platformers. Most of the other categories are fairly self-explanatory, though for adventure games, I'm using the old school definition of adventure, which ironically means it's probably a slow and gradual game. Okay, here's a few more. Pause the video if you wanna read these. Oh, and I guess I should mention, while it's a valid category, I don't play many stealth games, so they're gonna get divided up elsewhere. Maybe action or adventure, something like that. But is it really a problem that the stealth games are hidden under my system? And now onto the ratings. Yeah, even though I haven't played the vast majority of games on this list yet, when I do, I'm going to go ahead and give them ratings. But whoa, understand these are not normal ratings. These are 100% subjective ratings. That means I'm not rating anything objective, like number of bugs or frame rate. Instead, the only thing I'm looking at is how I personally feel about the game once I'm done. Because when you play a game, isn't that what matters? Who cares if your favorite game has flaws? It's your favorite game. And who cares if another game is the most polished one possible if it doesn't interest you? I like subjective ratings because they feel more honest and then I can figure out who's closer to my taste, whereas just a checklist of features can start to feel soulless. And hey, did I mention I'm picky? To give you an idea of just how picky I am, let's pick on some good games. The Messenger. This game has slick presentation and everybody says it's great, but you know how some people have zombie fatigue? Well, I think I may have ninja fatigue. And we have a Ninja Gaiden vibe going on here and that's savagely hard. So maybe this could be too? I'm not really looking for a ninja or a samurai game these days, so it's not on the list. Here's another, Night in the Woods. Everyone says this game is good and it's about returning to your economically run down hometown. Well, I already know what that's like. Both my middle school and high school literally don't exist anymore. They got condemned. I'm more into Beavis and Butthead style presentation if we're talking about economically depressed areas. It has anthropomorphic animals, which isn't my thing, but I guess that's not a deal breaker. I have mixed feelings on this art design. Apparently there's a knife fight, but I don't know. I'm just not getting the right vibe from this. So not on the list. Yes, I am a picky bastard these days, and yet I am still finding all these games. You know how big tech companies are always trying to harvest your data? Well, I have so many games on this list, you could probably build a profile of me based off of it. Here are some biases I'm aware of. There's probably more I'm not. So if you're a fan of stuff in column B here, I'm not your guy and you should probably disregard a lot of my ratings. I can make exceptions though. Like I'm allergic to games with turn-based combat, but some snuck their way onto this list anyway, so I decided to let them live. Especially if they're calling me like a siren and are about a post-apocalyptic Lovecraftian survival RPG. I mean, look at that. I might do it. I might play it anyway.
The point is, this list is biased as all hell, but you might still find something you like. I never made this list to be fair. I made this to find games I want to play. So, here are the ratings. Fantastic. This is pretty much the highest rating I can give a game. Short of dream game, but I've never run across one of those, so that's still theoretical. My life is better because I played this game. This doesn't mean the game doesn't have problems. It means the highs are so high that I don't care about the lows. Fantastic. Good to great. Now this sounds self-explanatory, but don't let me sell you short. Any game with this rating has my full seal of approval and rose up above the masses. I had no regrets playing this. I had a good time. Now something about it kept it from being one of the absolute best gaming experiences I've ever had, but that's not really a criticism. Hazy. This one has an easy test. If you ask me, did I like the game, and I have to stop and think about it, then it gets this rating. It certainly had something going for it, but did I like it a little bit or a little bit less? I don't know. In fact, I was originally going to call this the I don't know rating. I beat the game and I still don't know how I feel about it. For what it's worth, the majority of big budget AAA titles tend to fall into this category for me. Love and Hate. This is not a mediocre game. This game had so much going for it. It was headed towards fantastic or even dream game status, but then has serious, serious issues that just dragged it all back down. This rating upsets me more than any other. Games like this usually can't be modded and might make you lose some sleep thinking about them. Doubt. This one is a little weird. Games like this would probably be in the hazy category, except the longer I play them, the more I start to feel either slightly ill or else like I've been tricked into playing something more hollow. The game may still be perfectly competent, but if I'm getting that feeling, I'm not going to ignore it. So this is it. Pass. Here's a rating maybe some reviewers should use. First off, this does not mean it's a bad game. In fact, a lot of these can be well done games. What this means is it's the wrong game. See, the internet can sometimes struggle with the concept that just because you don't like something, it can still have value to others. Well, I recognize this, so I understand I am not the right person to play this game. It's just not for me. I'm going to skip it. Why should I weigh in with my opinion if I'm not interested in it in the first place? Opinions are not all equal. Somebody whom this game appeals to should play it, not me. And finally, I was going to have a bad rating for games that I think are terrible and no one should play unless they hate themselves, but I decided not to for two reasons. First, a bad rating would be exceptionally rare for me. Not because there aren't bad games, but because those would have to pass my filter to begin with. You can usually see the bad ones coming from a distance. But let's say a bad game snuck its way onto the list. Okay, well, why keep it there? The whole point of the list is to keep the garbage out. So let's have some consequences for making a bad game. If I think the game is terrible, it gets purged. It's off the list. People don't search through garbage to find garbage. That's easy. And those are the ratings. And since this video is a sort of successor to my top 25 games video, I have managed to play some of those since I made that. So here are my ratings for those games so far. As you can see, I still haven't gotten around to all of them, and here I am adding hundreds more to the pile. I may have a problem in that more great games are being made literally faster than I can play them. I haven't really come to terms with that yet. Well, the industry is making a lot of battle royale and mobile games these days. That should buy me some time. And that's the list! I hope you find it helpful. I don't really know because my view is skewed since I'm the only person I know of for sure who wants to try out every game on the list. Just browsing through it gets me excited every time. It takes some discipline to not just stop everything you're doing and play games the rest of your life. That's the danger. This list should have a warning. It's potent stuff. I mean, look at all these games. And these are the good ones. I think. I tend not to play brand new games since they're more expensive and are likely to have bugs. 
Some people don't understand how I don't get caught up in the hype to play a brand new game. Well, why would I when there are already so many great games already out that I haven't played? This list is so large, it almost feels like I've been displaced out of time for a decade or so. Like that Flight of the Navigator movie. So almost everything's new to me. A lot of people can get jaded about gaming, but man, blame the coverage. I would bet Fortnite and, I don't know, Overwatch could get more press coverage than every game on this list combined. I saw an ad for Overwatch in a movie theater. So it could be you're not jaded at all, it's just that nobody's showing you the good stuff. I've heard other people say that they think they may just not like games anymore. Well, maybe. Here's your test. If nothing on this list interests you, then yeah, you may not like games anymore. Well, I do. I play games mainly for escapism, and that urge hasn't really gone away as I've gotten older. On the contrary, I think there's going to be even more to escape from in the future. And I'm going to keep adding to the list, and it might evolve in the future. I'm still not sure what to do with games that almost make the list, and I'm currently keeping a separate list of games I'm not going to play, but I'm liking the soundtrack. This game trailer has great music. Mm. Now one thing I do not promise is up-to-date information. So it could be the game got released three years ago and it's still marked down as not out. Oops. Or sometimes the titles change. Like, hey, Pacer, you used to be called Formula Fusion and you would have gotten away with it too. Maybe with more help, the list will be more polished. Ideally, I would have a short description of the game when you click on the entry, but I figured you can always click on the link for one. Plus, I didn't want to delay this list another year, adding all that in. Also, when I can, I'll flag if a game is games as a service or not. That can be tricky to research, especially if you don't own the game. You'll hear more about that in a future video. Oh, and my spider sense is telling me I should say this. If you spot a problem with the list and want to make a correction, contact this email. Anything else, contact me at this email. You get those mixed up and it may never happen. Anyway, I guess I should end this with a message to developers. I'm aware we now live in an age where the right YouTuber can make or break a small developer by giving their game exposure they would never get otherwise. I seem to be at a point where I'm wielding some of that power, but I don't know what to do with it. Power's never really been my goal. When I do have it, I use it for stuff like getting maps to 30-year-old games. Part of me wants to help all developers. But I don't know how to do that and have time for my projects. So I'm just sort of stumbling around blindly here. But my game list is a start. If your game is on the list, it's going to receive a small but permanent boost. Assuming you don't kill it yourself. Yeah, murdering your own game gets you off the list. In fact, that happened to a few games that were on the list, but died before I got around to making this public. If I don't want to put your game on the list, sorry, I'm still on your side, but this is just for games I want to play. And hopefully you too. These aren't all the good games out there, but it's something. Hey, I'm doing my part to level the playing field against big games trying to swallow up everything. Now when you think about games, you can see more of what I see. Of course, most of you come here for the videos, and there's more coming, but I know I'm not the fastest person at making those. Well, at least you have some games you can play while you wait. Okay, seriously, that's enough. I can barely contain myself looking at this list. I wanna play at least one of these. Which one? Oh yeah, there's a button to select one at random too. Boop. Dabba dabba dabba!